G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Time to get some of these mini quad reviews that have been sitting around here for so long to get them out of the way in preparation for spring and a whole lot of other stuff. Fixed wing stuff. Yeah, where well, yay. Okay, so here we've got the DYS Lightning 220. This came to me a while ago and I did do a sort of a quick look at it. And since then I have installed the receiver and everything. And what we end up with is, excuse me, put this to one side. Here we go. Ta-da. There we go. That's it. That's the DYS Lightning 220 and yeah, Fox Tech have got a Lightning too. Very popular name for mini quads. There it is now. In the last video on this, which I will link to in the description, I mentioned some of the shortcomings I saw. That for a start, this crappy ass 2.4 and 5.8 gig antenna, these are useless. So I'll, but I'll fly it with that on. That's how it came. Also, the camera is mounted to the Mobius plate and it bangs into the carbon frame down here. Um, not good, not good at all. And you'll notice, you'll notice something here. This has got a Foxtech battery strap on it. What's going on there? Well, to be honest, uh, the strap that came with this, the DYS strap, isn't big enough to go around the entire body uh, and, and include a battery. It's too short. If I run it around here, you can see, look, it only gets that far. It's, uh, I don't know how they worked that out. Maybe you are supposed to push it through the little holes in the frame here, but that's such, such a lot of farting around. Uh, this is a much better way to do it. Put it right around the whole frame because the slot's cut in the bottom plate here for it. So DYS included a battery strap the wrong length. Not a good look. So uh, this isn't a Foxtech product, but hey, Foxtech sent me a bunch of these battery straps, so they get in the promo, I suppose. <laughs> um, there you go. Now, I had to add some foam here because there are these tiny little screws that poke up here. And there's a whole fistful of them. There's one, two, uh, what have we got? Better count them all. So one, one two, is there one under there? No. Three, four of those. So there's eight. Is it? Yep, there's eight of those screws. No, yes, there is. There's eight of them. And then there's the four posts. There's two at each end, two posts. And I'll get to that later because I'm not that really impressed with that side of things. But never mind, that's that. Now we have this Mobius plate, as I said. It doesn't actually go down very far because the camera hits the carbon bottom plate, which is kind of weird. And it has, it, in some ways, it's good, in some ways, it's bad. It has these little um, spiky things here, which I won't pull it out because it's a real pain in the backside to get them out. But I do have some spears because they provide some spears. Where are the spears? Have I lost them? Oh no, I have. Surely I haven't. Oh no, here they are. <laughs> Sorry. In a bag. So you get some spear of these. I'll take one out of the bag so you can see just exactly what these look like. They look like this. See, they've got sort of a, a barb on them. And then they push in through the rubber grommets that we normally have, these rubber grommets. So it pushes in through here and secures into a bit at the bottom, which is really great because it also comes with this rather natty GoPro frame, or GoPro, or similar, I suppose. So you can replace the basic just carbon there. On top of that, you can stick this. So then you can get your favorite camera, which I don't even have one sitting here. Where are my camera? Oh, I tidied it up, I remember now. Oh, I hate it when I tidy up. Hang on a minute, walks out of frame, comes back with a suitably sized camera. Ta -da. So there you go, you can pop your camera in like that, and as you can see from the side, you're getting some nice tilt angle on here as well. Let me just angle this up, see that, got a little bit of tilt on there. So this is really quite good, but, but if you've got a Mobius, well, I don't know what you do, because this has now got such big bumps on it, with these things in here, the Mobius, the Velcro won't be thick enough to stick it on there, you have to use a strap, and you can't put any angle on that plate, so you have to pack it under the front. They should have included a Mobius thing as well, I don't think. A Mobius is going to fit, and I do have a Mobius here. Yeah, uh huh. Oh no, I tell a lie. Look, call me. Oh, so I don't know why they don't include that because the Mobius will actually fit on that frame as well. So yeah, maybe I'll fit the Mobius on there. Very good. So the Mobius. So that's a point in its favour. It has a frame that provides automatic angling for your Mobius and your GoPro. Thank you, DYS. Nice touch. Nice touch. Too many of these quad frames come with no way to angle the Mobius frame. A good example of that is the little. One of my favorite little quads, the DL180, or DL, what is it, DL, DL, DAL, I don't know. I've had to tighten up the cable ties on the back here just to get the slightest bit of angle on the Mobius platform because there's no other way. And, this, and it's a pretty small platform, so ah, the Lightning it scores points there. Lovely, thank you very much. And looking around a bit further, I'm going to show you something that's probably going to confuse you. You're probably going to say, why did you do that? And, well, I only did it because I had to. There was no option. I'm going to show you. Here we go. Do you see what I've done? I've put a D4R2 receiver on the bottom of this frame. Why? Because 
in their wisdom, the people at DYS made this thing so full inside, you can't fit a receiver as small as the D4R2, you can't fit it inside. It's just cluttered full. You've got your flight controller up here. You've got two ESCs there with great big caps, two ESCs there with great big caps. You've got your camera in here, it takes up all this space, and there's just nowhere left to put a receiver. In fact, I think they knew that because if we look at the side where we plug in our, it's where our little USB connector goes, but there's the connector for the receiver. And it's, they've made a very big slot here so you can run it out the side to your externally mounted receiver. Now that's crap, utter, 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 utter crap. I don't want my receiver mounted on the bottom here where it's going to get smacked and dirty and wet and damaged. And if I put it on the top, then there's nowhere for a decent sized battery to fit. Um, you know, if you want to run a, say you want to run a, and remember this is a 220, so you run a reasonable sized battery. If you want to run a, what have I got? This is a 1500, I think. What does it say? It is a 1500. Let me undo the, and it's a Fox stick battery too. Oh, look, Fox stick battery. Um, if you want to run this on here, then it only just fits anyway. And there's nowhere to put your receiver on the top, is there? Nowhere at all, so it has to go on the bottom. What? Because I was going to put a high-tech system in here. I've got, I'm setting this up so other people can use it. I've got a high-tech Aurora 9X, and I was going to put one of the Minima receivers, which is one of the smallest high-tech receivers in there, but it won't fit. And it's, it's bigger even than that, so, oh, really bad point. It points off DYS. It's, um, it's not good. I could fit an XSR in there, a FreeSky XSR receiver in there, but not all manufacturers have receivers that small. So you're going to be up Shirt Creek without a paddle, so to speak. So there you go, DYS. Even if you'd raised the height of that frame by 5 mils, it would have been so much easier. And if you'd used standard ESCs rather than the ones you've used, these are some woggy looking things they've made, especially for this particular frame by the look of it. If you have a look, there's a huge capacitor sitting on top, which means you can't mount your receiver across the top of the ESCs. Oh, man. Never mind. That's uh, kind of the way it goes. Points off. And some other things I want to look at. I'm just going to move the camera angle here for a moment. I want to show you something really interesting. Okay, here's the back of the quad and all these little extra wires here dangling out the back. Well, what's with, what's with that? But you have to do that because well, unless you want to cut them off and I don't want to cut them off. So they're dangling out the back. But I'm just going to put some light pressure on the back of the frame. Look, look how much bend is in that frame. It's kind of bendy. It's, you know, for a carbon frame. These are only, it's only a three millimeter base plate and it's kind of bendy. And I'm wondering why is it so bendy? Because it's got quite wide arms. Well, I'll show you why. Now what DYS have done is what so many other quad manufacturers do when they're working with carbon. They've taken a really nice wide piece of carbon here, which should be quite stiff. And then they've gone and drilled some needless holes in it. So they've taken out about eight or nine millimeters here and about seven millimeters there, which means you basically you've, you've narrowed that arm by the equivalent amount. It's narrowed by eight millimeters there. It's narrowed by seven millimeters there. Why? Because that's where it's going to break. I mean, <laughs> I've talked about stress risers before, and this is a perfect example of a stress riser and an unnecessary stress riser, because what are these holes for? Well, if we look at the top side of this arm, you can see the wires come out of the motor down here. Let's try and get a closer shot, show you on this arm, perhaps. Find one that it's easy to see on. Uh, the lighting's not very good. There we go. Um, the wires come out of the motor here, and they could run across the top of the arm, but they don't. They go through a hole and run along the bottom of the arm. But then they go through another hole up and then through a hole in the side of the plate. Well, why bother routing it underneath the arm? There's absolutely no purpose that. Why not route it across the top of the arm? And you wouldn't need either of those two holes. And in fact, if you ran a, uh, some tape or a heat shrink around there, you wouldn't even need the two tiny holes that are used for that cable tie. So this arm would be immensely stronger and you wouldn't have all this wibbly wobbly bend in there. It's, oh, what is it? What is with um, manufacturers that feel they have to put holes in places that don't need holes? Rule of thumb with carbon, don't cut any holes unless you absolutely have to because the amount of weight you save, like here, the amount of weight saved from that is nothing. But again, we've got a frame that is this wide. If we looked across there, it's, I don't know, how wide is it? Let's get my calipers. I'm going to measure this just to give you, show you what really happens when you do things badly. Um, this frame has a width of around about 43 millimeters, 43 millimeters across. But they've taken out, in the middle here, they've taken out, what's that, about 16 millimeters there with that hole. And then they've got these other holes here, which are probably about three millimeters. Yeah, three millimeters. So that's six and 16, 22 millimeters. So they've halved the effective strength of that base plate because look at all the material. If you draw a line across here, half the material is missing. So it will break. It will break across there if it's really pushed hard enough. If you left those bits in there, then it wouldn't, you know, you'd 
um, that 40 millimeters of carbon is just about not impossible to break, but they've broken this. And up the front here, they've got a circle there. What for? Why, why cut that hole out? This, you're going to save like a fraction of a tiny percentage of a gram. And then here, I can see why they cut this hole out, because with their dumbass camera mounting system, it, well, it doesn't really help because it still bangs into the frame. So they could have left that hole in there as well. No cooling there, so you don't need cooling for that. And so it's just like the people who design the frames think, oh, we've got a, a router we can make, all sorts of fancy holes. Let's turn it into a piece of fretwork. Let's turn it into a lace doily that's so weak that we can sell spare parts all the time. And DYS are not the only manufacturer that do this. They all do it, almost without exception. They drill the snot out of their frames, route them out so they're no longer very strong. Right, enough about the bad sides of this thing for the time being. Let's look at some of the other good bits. It's got the DYS Hollow Shaft 2205 motors. These are really powerful little motors, and uh, I like them. I like them a lot, so that's a good bonus. Uh, uh, this thing should fly like a rocket ship because of those motors. should be really good. Now, I have uh, as I mounted a receiver on the bottom. One thing I did, when I was trying to find a place inside here to mount a receiver, I gave it a good once over. I gave it a quick look over to see that there was nothing out, because this has to come all the way from China, something could have happened in shipping, so I just gave it a very close look to see if there was anything out of place. And look what I found. Look at this. Here is a little tiny slither of wire from the middle wire on this ESC where it joins onto the PDB that is almost touching the other connection there. If it had touched, boom, smoke would have come out, and those fancy ESCs, one of them would be toast. But more importantly, what's happened is that piece of wire broke off with just a little bit of flexing, so now it was floating around inside there. It could have shorted out the flight controller, could have shorted out ESCs, could have shorted out anything that was inside the frame. So that's really, really bad. And the quality of those solder joints where the ESC wires join onto the PDB is not good. It's perhaps not as bad as the Walkera QRX 350 I looked at, but it's not too far off. It's, it's not good. Um, they're using lead-free solder, of course, which doesn't help, but there's, there's little inclusions, little dark bits. The wires are on a bit of an angle. They don't sort of fit directly over the pad. Little things that, you know, I'm thinking it could be improved, DYS. You really could have improved that. But there we go. That's the thing so far. This is what we've got. Um, it's got some LEDs on the back, and they do the little turn signal. It's got an F3 flight controller, so you can do all sorts of fancy snot that no one really cares about um, if you want to. And so what I'm going to do now is charge the battery up. And in part two, we'll take it out, give it a jolly good thrashing, see how, see if we can break it, see if these arms will snap off where I said they would. Because with my flying, I don't have to try, I can really put it to the torture test. But in the meantime, that's the first part on the bench. You've seen the good, you've seen the bad. There it is, the Lightning 220 from DYS. Now, if you've got questions, comments, all the usual things, put them in the usual place. I'll do my best to answer them. And I'm hoping to get these other mini quad reviews out of the way really soon so I can get onto those lovely fixed wing machines I've got sitting here waiting to be flown. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye for now.